Hello and thanks for choosing AbletonOp.com. Today's video is a demonstration of a performance technique in which I reassign the crossfader to act as a master wet-dry control for my return effects. The goal is to be able to kill all of the effects on the side A of the crossfader and to have 100% wet effects on side B. In this way I could easily create builds by cutting the crossfader all the way to the right and then modulating the effects and then when I'm ready for the drop cut it all the way back to the left. Cool, let's see how it's done. Now the first time I tried this I thought, okay, I'll just assign all of my performance channels to side A and all of my return channels to side B. Easy enough. However, I noticed that that created some problems. Live sets the send knobs as post fader by default. And I like this setting because if I'm sending a track to a delay and I pull the track's volume fader down, it also stops sending to the delay. This is both intuitive and musical, and allows you to use the volume fader to create some momentary delay sends. So let's just see how this all works. Okay, I've got my drum channel assigned to side A, and my return channel assigned to side B. Crossfader's all the way to the left, let's launch clip. Cool, we'll send some delay. Right now we don't hear anything, but as I fade my crossfader in, Okay, nice blend of the two. And let's check the post fader action. I'm going to pull my volume fader down. The delay dies out just as we would expect it. However, when I place the cross fader all the way to the right, side B 100% wet, I notice that this also kills the delay send. This is not ideal because the whole idea of assigning the effects to the cross fader was to have an easy way to jam on the effects to create a build. Now I could change the send knob from post mode to pre mode, and that would fix our crossfader. So now all the way to the left, no effect, we're still sending, go to the middle, get a blend, go all the way to the right, 100% wet effects, that's good. But notice what happens if I go back to the middle and I pull my volume fader down, we're still sending the effects and that's because our send is going to the delay pre-fader. So this is also not ideal. So what we need to do is first create two new audio tracks. You can see that I've done that here in yellow. I'm going to title the left one dry bus and the right one wet bus. Now we need to open up the IO settings and we're going to take all of our dry channel, select all of them together, and instead of sending the audio to the master, we're going to send it to the dry bus. And the same thing for our return channel, we're going to send that to the wet bus. Make sure that the audio from is set to no input, because we don't need to pull from anywhere, we're already sending stuff to these channels. We want to change the monitor mode to input monitoring. And the reason we do this is because if you're recording a live set, you don't want these channels to be rendering audio, because that's just extra work for your computer to have to do. And we don't really need that. Now rather than assigning the dry channels to the crossfader side and the return channel to the crossfader, instead we're going to assign the dry bus to the side A and the wet bus to side B. Routing your audio in this way allows you to use the crossfader in a way that we initially planned, as well as allowing you to keep the send knobs in post fader mode. So let's demo it out. Crossfader all the way to the left, we'll play our clip, there's our drums, and since we're already sending to return B, let's fade it in. There's our delay. And all the way to the right. Continually generating unless I pull my volume fader down. Okay, that's just what we wanted. Best of both worlds. Alright. Now we're not quite done. There's still some fine tuning that we need to take care of. Let's take a look at the dry channel. It's coming from its source. It's going to the dry bus and then to the master channel. However, our wet signal is going from its source to the return channel and then to the wet bus and then to the master channel. Now this wet signal has to make one extra stop before it gets to the master channel, which is going to create a small delay. However, we can use Live's individual track delay to compensate for this. The track delay is over here at the bottom right, there's a circle with a D, and you can see the track delay right there. 
Now before we just assign some random number of milliseconds, we need to figure out exactly how late the wet channel is. So in order to find that out, what I'm going to do is go over to my drum channel, and I'm going to solo the kick drum. Just some nice percussive sound that's really short. Let's take a listen. Okay, a nice short transient sound. That's good. Now we need to go to the dry and wet bus, and we need to open our I.O. again. And instead of being in monitor mode, we need to go to auto mode. Because we need to render the kick drum going through so we can take a look and actually see how many milliseconds it's delayed. Okay, now that we've got our bus's arms to record, we've turned off our delay over here. Looks like we're good to test this out, so let's hit record. And we'll play this clip. We only need a few hits. If we zoom way in, you will see that they are in fact delayed. So let's take a look. Looks like our dry bus is hitting here around between 492 and 493 and our wet is around 506 so we've got about between 11 and 12 milliseconds so let's go back here so I'm gonna go back I'm gonna play the clip again and then we're gonna slowly delay the dry channel and as we approach 12 milliseconds you should hear them start to get back in phase Pretty close. Let's try 11. So anywhere in there, if you really wanted to get scientific about it, we could hard pan the dry bus to the left, hard pan the wet bus to the right. Let's add an audio channel, and we'll set it up to resample from the master. Go ahead and arm that to record. And now that we've got 12 millisecond delay, let's see how that's doing. Okay, we'll go back here and we want to look at our new audio channel. Okay, it's still a little bit off. 502, 504. Looks like we're a little more, maybe 1.2 slow. So let's come in here and let's try 13.2. How about that? Do the same thing. Record. And if we come in real close, that's looking pretty good. That might be negligible between not even half a millisecond. So we'll just leave that right alone. Okay. Well, now that we've got everything dialed in, your dry and wet bus should be back in phase. I hope you find this method useful. Remember that you don't need an APC40 or a controller with a crossfader even to use this method. All you need is an available fader, and you can always manually map it to Live's crossfader. In the next video, I will show you how to use this routing method to get a more fine-tuned control out of effects like stutter edit or the finger. Alright, that wraps it up for today. Thank you for choosing Ableton Up. We'll see you next time.